Hello and welcome to Unprofessional Engineering. My name is James. And you got Luke. Luke, we are going to continue our great series on inventors we love with Bill Nye the Science Guy. See, what happened with me on this one, James, is it turned from inventors we love to inventors... Eh. <laughs> inventors? Is he even an inventor? Eh. And do we love him? I, he's an okay guy. I mean, you know... Do you know him? You uh, guys are tight? We're not Point. tight, but, you know, he... He does good things for science, I think. He does. I think I think that's the big takeaway from all of this. Yeah, but I, I would I would not put him in there with like some of our previous folks like Elon and Jobs and yeah, any of the other like like traditional inventors. So yeah. All right, well that sums it up, so thanks for joining <laughs> us. <laughs> all right. A little bit of background info on our good on our boy. friend Bill William. Sanford, I think. Nye. Yeah, Sanford. 63 years old. So he's 62, technically. Because his birthday's in November. Okay. November 27th of wow. 1955. Wow. Okay. Why don't you know this? He was born in D.C. So I think this is actually our first American great inventor. Is that correct? Uh, Jobs was an American citizen, right? His parents oh, yeah. were. Oh, that's right. Yeah, his yeah. parents oh, were. Oh, I forgot we did Jobs. Yeah. And Alexander Graham Bell might have been as well. I think he yeah. was. Let's do a little more right. research before Let's we Let's research what mouth. we've researched before. Okay, anyways. Uh, born in D.C., so that's cool. This was probably the most interesting thing about him. Okay. Is that in World War II, I his mom this. was a code breaker, which is awesome, I think. Yeah, they recruited her, and there was this name for the team yeah, she like, got recruited like to. Like Gouchy Girls yeah, I can't remember what it was, something. but yeah, so she was a code breaker, and, her, and his father was also, you know, involved. He was a some... veteran. He was a POW. <clears throat> he yeah. was locked away in a Japanese camp with no electricity. And he and he invented, he did some work with electrical yeah, stuff. Yeah, he did a bunch of electrical work, but somehow not having electricity and stuff made him a sundial enthusiast, which comes into play later on yeah. in Mr. Bill's a big Bill's. sundial guy. He is. Well, who isn't, right? I, I mean, other than me. I don't even know what a sundial is. Really? That doesn't that doesn't it surprise me that tells much. Tells time by it the does. sun, right? That's about okay. it. Yeah. Okay. So it sounds like he had a pretty normal childhood, which yeah. isn't super exciting for our sake. Nothing special. But DC. then he went to Cornell, which is a pretty okay school, right? Yeah. Uh, Cornell has. I mean, it's not Penn State, but <laughs> right. <laughs> That's you know. right. We are. Penn. The the Nittany Lion's ear broke off. The big stone Nittany what? Lion. Yeah. So it was St. Paddy's Day the other day. So you're okay. not allowed to drink on St. Patrick's Day okay. there because, you know, you drink a little. I don't know. Okay. Anyways, and a drunk broke its ear off. So that's unfortunate. But anyways, Cornell has the Swanson School of Engineering. The dude who founded ANSYS basically bought them their engineering school. That's pretty cool. Yeah, good for him. Um, but anyways, he got his BS in mechanical engineering because mechanical engineering is the best kind of engineering. Of course. And graduated in 1977. And since he is the science guy, uh, <clears throat> clearly he must have more degrees than that, right? Uh, he does not. He does not. He I, has a lowly. De he has the equivalent of what I have, just from a better school. I, I was I was under the impression whenever you and I were saying, "Hey, who are we going to talk about?" I was like, "I just th I just said Bill Nye." And we we're both like, "Yeah, Bill yeah, Nye's it's the so best. cool. He's got to have like PhDs and masters yeah. and astronomy and yeah. and I think we got him confused." with uh, Neil deGrasse. I don't think we got him confused. Yeah. Maybe you did, but there, there's a but lot yeah, of differences so, but there. Bill, but We could do Neil next. Yeah, we are going to do Neil. But the interesting thing about, about Bill Nye, uh, the science guy, is he's he's kind of this weird thing. Like you and I, I agree. Most engineers... <laughs> he's weird like are, us? No, most engineers... And I'm sorry, guys, but most oh, engineers... Yeah. You have social anxiety. Right. You are awkward <laughs> i am awkward well, but yes i know what you're saying but, but bill is, he, has, he breaks uh, the mold yeah he, he has this really fun interesting personality he's yes. really outgoing uh loves being in front of a camera so uh i feel like you and i are maybe kindred spirits with a guy like we probably could team up with him very well maybe like, we could ask him on the show we should do oh that i'm going to tweet him goodness Gone. gracious consider it done after this show Anyways, we got to be nicer now. I ha no, I like. Well, I'm going to tell you that I like him. But I, I, I wrote a great line on here. I was very proud of it because of his him only having a BS in okay. a bachelor's degree in uh, mechanical engineering. I say this begs the question: Is William Sanford Nye even really a science guy? And then I follow up with, I say Nye. <laughs> 
pretty you're good, really right? Pr- not really. Oh, you're I, really proud I of think, that one, aren't you? I, everyone listening, you enjoyed that, and I know <clears> it. <throat> I bet my friend Pete really likes that one. Anyways. I'm sure. He actually had a class with Carl Sagan, which was awesome. So Carl Sagan, famous astronomer, astrophysicist, cosmetologist, is that right? (laughs) Yeah, I'm Uh, fairly certain. All of these things, and he had him as a professor. What did Carl Sagan write? Did he write? Yeah, he had some famous book and some other stuff. Was it Dianetics? Didn't he and and someone else invent a religion? I don't know. Um... I think you're just making stuff up now. No, Carl Sagan. There's, He's there's, kind of a weird dude. There's something interesting, like unusual about him. Yeah. We could talk about him as a great person as well. Okay. Look at our list just growing. Uh, Clark has said that we do a lot of these, so maybe we don't maybe do we too many. To tone it back yeah. a little bit. So, uh, fun fact. Uh, Bill Nye goes back to Cornell and guest lectures for an intro to astronomy class and human ecology I feel class. like... It, but is that good? Like, Why not? I feel like he should be doing like an advanced astrophysics. I don't think he's an advanced astrophysics kind of guy. You know, astrophysics is very difficult, right? You you should be educated formally in that. I had two friends that were astrophysics majors at Penn State. How'd they do? Like super good. They have jobs? Yeah. Are they astrophysicizing right now? Uh, I don't know. They aren't actually. But one, the one guy, super smart, 4.0 Penn State astrophysics, had published papers wasn't good enough to get into Caltech because eh, that just wasn't a good enough school to get in here. I thought that was mind blowing. That's crazy. Yeah. Anyways, let's move on to Bill Nye's work experience. Yeah, so well, apparently uh, he did pretty good for himself. I, I mean, thought so. Right out of school, he lands a job at, uh, at Boeing. Yeah, pretty and impressive. I, I wonder, did, did you get his GPA? At, at... I didn't get his GPA. I didn't look that up. Did you see it? No, I didn't. But I'm assuming to go directly to from Boeing, school to Boeing. You were doing okay. I, I would bet he was he was pretty good. Yeah, I would think so as well. Uh, he actually invented something there. He did. What was it called? The A hydraulic resonance suppressor tube. And it's used on 747s. Today. I assume it's still used today. But that's pretty cool, yeah. right? I mean, that's one more invention than I have. I mean, you definitely need to suppress resonance so in hydraulics. He was only an engineer for a handful of years it's like, like in the industry. I think it was like nine years. Yeah, and he's already more successful than I am ever going to be. So well, that hurts. Well. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> another fun fact. I thought this was really cool, too. Okay. So he has a lot of neat information. He does. He would apply to NASA to be an astronaut every few years. And you know what they said every time? Nye. <laughs> okay. It's going to work every time. You do it again. I'm getting hit. You're going to get punched. violence. You're going to get punched in the Violence neck. is never the solution. But they did say he was not going to be an astronaut. And I assume it's because he's kind of sickly looking. Well, and, yeah. well, he's old. I mean, he's... He wasn't old oh, when he was... he wasn't old was... then. Oh, I thought you meant he was applying now. <laughs> no. Back in the day. He's 62. I mean, going into space at 62. Ooh. Yeah, that's that's true. Okay, so before we get into... How did he get into the entertainment business? Yeah. Business. Let's do a little shout out. How about that? I like our shout outs. We have no sponsors this week. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's right. We Let's sh- take a break for a word from our sponsors. Oh, we don't have sponsors? No, we don't have sponsors. All right. So how about shout outs? Let's do good? some shout outs. I love our shout outs. All right. Who do so, we got? I only have one shout out, but I really liked this one. Okay. Andrew P. Good wrote Andrew. back to us after he received his stickers, which is very rare. Normally people just take them and run. They're selfish. They are. Thanks a lot, listeners. Uh, but he said, we're selling ourselves short that the stickers aren't just amazing. They are, and I quote, S all the way to the T sweet. Hashtag you're the worst. I feel like this, this hashtag... <laughs> You're the worst thing. I I really feel like it's building some momentum. I, I think so. It's all the rage in Ireland. The rage, apparently. Yeah. But I do feel in like Ireland, I forgot about that. You forgot about our Irish buddy. Yeah. Um, I feel like it's because when you're saying you're the worst, it's really a term of endearment. It is. You're right. Like you don't really mean you're the worst. It really means like the opposite of that. It means like you're funny or I'm enjoying your right. company. Right. Right. So I really feel like we need to get this hashtag you're the worst. Thing I bet Bill really Nye will use ground. it. Yep. Because it is a term of endearment. It is. Anyways, if you guys want some of our S all the way to the T sweet stickers, uh, email us at unprofessionalengineering at gmail.com. Show us that you subscribe, and we will mail them in the old-fashioned mail right to your door. Yeah. Uh, you could also do us a favor and subscribe. Yeah, subscribings. And review our podcast. I haven't checked on our reviews lately, but people keep claiming they're going to do it. So 
Maybe, maybe yeah, we're up to you know, more. You know how it is when you say you're going to do something and then you All just you get, have to do is click five you just stars. Get busy with life. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, email us, subscribe, review. We're going to become famous. I think I'm going to retire soon. And that's that. So moving on to Bill Nye some more. Yes. Okay. Uh, how did he get into entertainment? That is where we're at, I believe, right? Yes. So do you know anything about how he got in there? I do. So oh, uh, apparently, he uh, when he left Boeing uh, back in, I think it was 86. So you were still, I think... I was four. You were pooping your pants. I mean... For sure. <laughs> that hasn't changed. <laughs> <laughs> so back in 86... Uh, and it seems like an odd transition. So my guess is he was kind of a funny guy, like all the time. Anyways, like growing up, he was probably the the class clown, life of the party. Do you want a little guy. background on that? Yeah, yeah, I would. He won a Steve Martin lookalike contest, and his friends would always have him do like Steve, Steve Martin, Martin bits. Yeah. Oh, okay. And that then makes some sense. he was doing stand-up comedy at night when he was at Boeing. Yeah. So apparently, from '86 for about four years, he actually was doing. Uh, comedy. There was a comedy troupe uh, where he lived that he was working with, and supposedly he wanted to be. Let's see if you know who this is. The next Donald Herbert. Do you know who Donald Herbert? Mr. Wizard. Stage name is Mr. Wizard. Did you ever I watch would not Mr. Have Wizard? Known, no. I, I will. Really? I will also say I had never watched Bill Nye the Science Guy. So first of all, I had nephews and nieces back in the Bill Nye the Science Guy time uh -huh. frame. And we used to watch so much Bill Nye the Science Guy. That was my time guy. frame. I loved Bill Nye the Science yeah, Guy. I did not. Um, but Mr. Wizard, this guy by the name of uh, Donald Hubert, had a show. He, had a, they, they, he ran a bunch of different times. So he had a show in the 50s, uh, another one in the 60s, the 70s, and even all the I way up until that. like 1980. Yeah. Um, and his stuff wasn't necessarily just science, but it was, it was all related to fields of science like he, he did a lot of stuff with animals he did a lot of stuff with you know different technologies and building things and so he was like the original uh bill nye guy so yeah so what in 86 he basically said engineering's for suckers i'm out of this I'm thing out. he quit and he started his career like you're saying and he was on something called almost live yeah and this is where he actually got the nickname bill nye the science guy because he'd do like short sciencey skits yeah. on there which I thought was interesting. And he also came up with saying gigawatt instead of gigawatt, which is also cool. You know, like... 1.21 gigawatts. gigawatts. Yes. And with that mentioned, in 93, he also was on... Uh, or not 93, before that, he was on Back to the Future, the animated series. There was an animated series of yeah, Back to the Future? There was. You don't remember that? You were I probably don't... out partying. You know, you were old. I don't know about doing that. Doing fun stuff. Do you think his comedy stand-up is kind of like Bob Saget, where it's like, you know, he's he's Danny Tanner, but then he does stand-up and, and it's all horribly dirty, yeah, dirty uh, vulgar no, stuff? I, I would bet that, from what I understand, he did, a, like, the bits he did, he would actually do experiments on stage that were, you know, either humorous or there would be something unexpected yeah. that happened. Okay. Um, interesting, I watched a video last night, and... I didn't realize that they lined up time-wise. He was on Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Oh, okay, I didn't know and, that. And it was, it was really awkward because you could tell that, and I love Mr. Rogers, but it was, sure. just a, it was an awkward thing that he was on because like they were in the kitchen and they were doing an experiment and just the, the it was just an awkward video. Yeah. If you get a chance, Google I'll, it, but I'll, it's a pretty I'll cool video. If you, if you want to try this with your kids, you take a, a water bottle, you fill it about halfway up with vinegar, uh -huh. you take a balloon and put baking soda in it, and then you put the balloon on top of the water bottle, and then when you pull the balloon up, the baking soda falls into the vinegar and it blows up the balloon oh, yeah. from the gases that are generated from the chemical Very reaction. Very cool. It was pretty neat. So. That, that is pretty neat. And he had on his lab coat and everything when he was doing it. And this is the kind of stuff that in 1993 he started doing on Bill Nye the Science Guy, what everyone pretty much knows him for, his TV show. That ran yeah. out like five-ish years or something. Yeah, it started at a local PBS station. Then right. I think because of how well it did, it started to syndicate. And I, I watched it here locally in Pittsburgh on PBS all the time. So it definitely got syndicated. I actually watched an episode of it yesterday okay. while while I was doing my research so that I would know what was going on. Because you'd never watched it. Was, so here's what I'm going to say is it was entertaining. Yes. And it was informative and educational. 
I think the production quality of our podcast is better than the production quality of that show. Really? It was not well. Like the done. audio and stuff? Well, or? The audio was fine, but I mean, like, it was. It was old well, school kind of crappy. I mean, keep in mind, it's, it, it's PBS. It's a local studio there. I just watched a show on PBS that was outstanding. Yeah. But that's I think it all 20 depends. years later. But yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not down in the show or dissing it here. It was good. I just, it, I was surprised by how low budget it was. How the, about that? The thing that I liked about it when I watched it was, and, and, I, and I think any show that does this for kids in particular, it's why I like Mr. Rogers. It's why I liked... Uh, some of the shows, anything that exposes kids to engineering, math, and science at a super young age. Because if you look at, and not to go on my rant here, uh-huh. but if you look at like what kids are doing when they go to college and they come out of college, they got this ridiculous amount of debt. Sorry, liberal arts listeners, for a liberal arts degree where they're, it's going to take them forever. <laughs> bless you. It's going to take them forever to pay their debt back. And then whenever you look at the most in-demand jobs, they're all math, science, and technology. So I love the fact that he's getting kids at a young age excited about math, science, and technology so that they make a good decision when they go to school. And I'm not saying all liberal arts is bad. If you're really good at dancing, James, you should have been a dancer, (laughs) which I'm sure you are. If you're really good at painting, go be a painter. But if you're not, eh, don't go to school for liberal arts. Get an engineering degree and you'll make some money. It's interesting that you talk about dancing because he's going to have two tie-ins to dancing. I, we'll I, get to I those know. shortly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's not do that. Uh, There's two tie-ins to dancing? Two tie-ins, yep. I only got the one. I, I'll, I'll okay. surprise you with one then. Okay. So lastly, before we take another break. So in 93, he pitches this Bill Nye the Science Guy idea to the station. Yep. And he, his pitch was that it was basically Mr. Wizard meets Pee Wee's Playhouse. Which I thought was I a great a great way to describe the show. It really is. Yeah. Like a mix of now, those two. Did you two. watch Pee Wee's Playhouse? I did. Yeah. So much engineering. Granted, it was all like remember he would wake up in the morning and he had like the toaster yeah. shooter and everything. Yeah. I love Pee Wee's Playhouse. That was one of our great engineering movie things. Was yeah. Pee Wee's Big Adventure, if you remember. I love that. Uh, there were a hundred episodes of Bill Nye the is Science Guy. A hundred's a lot, man. In five years, we've done what? We've done almost 80 at this point. Okay. We can, I, as soon as we get over 100, then, then can I can start trash, trash talking. Them. Yeah. All right. So with that, let's take a break for this week's Luke's Terrible or Great eh, or, or kind of engineering ish design. Yeah. So I'm on a flight the other day from San Francisco back here to Pittsburgh, and I get a window seat. I'm having a little intestinal Thank issues. You for that. I'm okay. trying to think how to describe it. And the two people beside me are sound asleep because this is a red eye. And it's one of those things where it was the most uncomfortable flight ever. And I, I'm thinking about like the design and layout of an airplane. And granted, they'd have to lose a couple of seats. But I feel like there should be like an outside aisle for people. I mean, you'd have to reconfigure the design of an airplane. But I just... It was the most, and and I, that can't be, I mean, you've been on an airplane and I'm sure you've had some intestinal issues. Uh, I usually do an aisle seat so they don't have to deal with this, but I think that they need to really rethink the way they design planes. Like if you're the CEO of United and you're, granted they're not, they're not, they're not flying in the baggage like I was, but I feel like they need to redesign that and take into consideration people in window seats I feel like need to use the restroom. I long feel flights. like you're just being angry. You're basically saying the amazing invention that is flight. an airplane and flight <laughs> needs to be completely redesigned so that you can take well, care no, of your no, intestinal No, no, they don't. They don't need to completely issues. redesign the plane. I just feel like if they reconfigured uh, the and I know it's all about making money, so they got to squeeze as many seats in as they can. But it was have the you most ever flown uncom- on Spirit. Spirit basically gives you less room and jams an extra row or two of seats in there. Man, it is no. it is not a great I couldn't imagine thing. this being any better because it was no. pretty tight. So my bad engineering is seating layouts on airplanes. And I'm sure a ton of our listeners have been on planes with the same. Like this lady, totally snoring. And I'm like, I cannot How wake How about this? this? If you guys think this is a reasonable complaint, feel free to write in to unprofessionalengineering at gmail.com and back Luke. I think he's just whining. I could be. It could be that I'm like four foot tall and have all sorts of room on planes as well. So Yeah. Okay. Anyways, can we move on with yes, the we show? Can. Poor airplanes. Man. Uh, fun fact about Bill Nye the Science Guy before we go on. Okay. Nominated for 23 Emmys. 
119. He, ah, that's crazy. Isn't it? Okay, so he's he's pretty... I, it, what I initially started thinking about, I was like, ah, he's just an engineer that's funny. But he's been super successful in everything he's done. Yeah. Soon I want to talk about other shows he's done and other sciencey stuff that he's involved with. But okay. first I have a fun game okay, for you. Okay, shoot. Okay, and I don't want you looking at my notes. I love games. All right. So apparently part of Bill Nye the Science Guy was... Uh, having a parody song okay. in every episode. So I'll give you an example. Uh, one for the first episode, Smells Like Air Pressure was the parody song okay. instead of Smells Like Teen Spirit okay. by Nirvana. So I'm going to give you the parody name, and it's going to be kind of hard because you don't hear the song. And okay. you try and tell me... Can you sing it? No. No. Okay. I mean, I could, but I'm okay. not going to. Okay. Bill's Got Boat. Baby's got back. How did you know that? By Sir Mix-a-Lot. Oh, Sir Mix-a-Lot. Yes. Yeah, that's an easy one. ABCs of machinery. ABC of machinery. ABC one two three. Yeah. Uh, the by, Jacksons. Yeah, Jackson five. I'm way better at this than you thought. <laughs> you yeah. are. R e c u i c l e. Uh. Respect, Aretha Franklin. <laughs> did you read these? No, I did not. I did wow, not. Wow. Good job. Let's talk about stress. Let's t uh, let's talk about sex <laughs> by uh, I forget the name of the group. Salt and Pepper. Salt and Pepper. That's yes. right. Pepper. You just wanted me to Peppa. say sex on I did. the podcast. You're <laughs> I the, didn't know you're, if you would. You were the worst. Seller Haze. This might be hard. Purple Haze. Jeez. Jimi Hendrix. You are on fire. Celest Celestial Hotel. Uh, Celestial. Hotel California? See, that's where I was thinking, too. It was Heartbreak Hotel by Heartbreak Elvis. Heartbreak Hotel, okay. And Baby, I Love Your Wave. Baby, baby I Love Your your Ways. Yeah. By? Uh, Johnny Mathis. Peter Frampton. Okay. Or Big Mountain? Never heard of Big Mountain. Never heard of I did. I am blown away by the amount that of those you knew. the best I've ever done on any on one any of game. our fun games. Yeah. I am... I am... Just floored that you did so well. Good job. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, moving on to other media appearances. Yes. How about that? Sure. So here's some cool stuff, I think, is apparently he's big into Disney. So yes. they love him there. He appeared in Ellen's Energy Adventure from 96 to 2017, so it must have just closed down, at the Universe of Energy Pavilion in Epcot. And you can hear him also in the dinosaur attraction at Animal Kingdom. And I'm going to Animal Kingdom in about a month. So I will... You're going to Disney? Yeah. In how three come, weeks. How come I didn't know about this? Well, I'm just telling you now. Wow. You're finding out with our listeners. Okay. Uh, so I'll listen for his voice. That's pretty cool. He also designed... He's also part of Design Lab of Cyberspace Mountain in Disney Quest. Known as Bill Nye the Coaster Guy. So I guess I'll give us a shout out. We have an episode all about roller coasters and the death traps that they are. So go ahead and watch that You're one. You're not a roller coaster I fan? tell you this all the time and that's the same reaction you give me. I hate them. I don't remember I what you say them. most often. That's probably fair. <laughs> also, he was basically the science guy on BattleBots for a few years. Oh, I remember seeing him on BattleBots. Yeah. I saw a couple episodes. Uh, I actually worked with a team on their robot named Chomp. Yeah, back in the day for that. BattleBots. And literally yesterday, the guy that kind of runs BattleBots texted me asking if I wanted us, our company wanted to be involved with it this year. Nice. It's going to be on the Science and Discovery channel. So, you, know, you know what we should do? We should broadcast from one of the fights. We could do that. That would be How cool. Maybe we could get in that on that. I'll, I'll tell him about the podcast. So BattleBots, shout out, John, thank you. Uh, he's hosted... 100 Greatest Discoveries on the Science Channel, or Science... I feel like we're he's competition a little bit for he, us now, I, I right? think we're going to... I'm going to tweet him, I'm telling you, man. We it's need great. to get him on. We do. Just think, that would be great. Uh, he's... I like this one. He appeared on America's Most Smartest Model. That was a show? <laughs> Apparently. Uh, and this one, I know you're a big fan of. He was on Dancing with the Stars. Okay. Season 17 in yeah. 2013, which makes me sad that yeah. that show could possibly be on okay, that Okay, so, so here's the thing about that one. So I've liked everything he's done thus far. I feel like this whole Dancing with the Stars sellout. thing is, I, I, I feel like it's a little bit of a sellout yeah. because I, I don't see that as a platform for someone like him to, I can see what you're to saying. communicate his message of, 
you know, science and technology and schools and all that. It's just a way to make, you know, a couple hundred grand and the way he, the, the way he, <laughs> the way he, 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 pulled felt, a, he pulled a quadricep. I felt that's the most engineering way that you can lose is you hurt yourself he, dancing he, to he, lose. He hurt him. And, and what does that do for all, like, you know, all the future nerds of America? Yeah. The guy hurts himself in a dance. So I, I, I feel like it's a little, I, I still like him. But I feel like the Dancing with Stars is a little bit of a sellout. And then when you look at all the people that are on there with him, it's a whole bunch of like B movie stars, retired people that yeah. need to buy their, need to pay their their mortgage because they don't have any money. So I, I feel like it's a bit of a sellout. I, I agree. I thought that's funny. He's also been on The Big Bang Theory, which I love. And he has on Netflix now, Bill Nye Saves the World, which I yeah, have not watched. I haven't. But I, I want to. I'm not, a, I'm not a Netflix subscriber, so I'm just going to ask you to give me your Netflix that's, password. That's reasonable. Login. Okay. I Are show, you a Netflixer? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm an Amazon primer. Oh, okay. So I do my movies with Amazon. Fair enough. Do you do Amazon? Uh, yeah. I do Amazon. You do both. I do both. Mm, interesting. Well, Amazon, it's just because I get it with my Prime membership. Ah, because, I got gotcha. you. Know, I got gotcha. you. How, how could the wife order 14 things a day if she didn't have Prime? Um, okay, so he was on a bunch of other stuff as well. But he did actual other science stuff too. See, and I, I know I you don't believe this. I couldn't this. find much of this. Okay, so let me explain it to you. How about that? Explain it to me, Lucy. Explain it to you. He helped create a small sundial, back to the sundial stuff. Oh, this thing with the Mars. Yeah, on the Mars Exploration Rover uh, for the, in the early 2000s. I feel like there's got to be a better way to tell position of the sun and time in the sundial if you're sending something to Mars. Yeah, well, it was also used for color calibration as well. So I think that was the main thing that I it gotcha. was for. I gotcha. But I thought that was interesting. Like maybe, like, do you think he he's actually that important in the sundial community that they picked him to do this, or was it kind of like an attention thing for them to like bring attention to the Mars missions? Probably it's probably it's like you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Like he's yeah. a personality. The dude designed something that is actually on Mars. I think that's what I'm saying. Like, so he has done these other things other than the Boeing stuff like and I'm TV. Fairly certain nothing I've ever designed is anywhere. Have you ever designed anything that's actually being used? I I have. I'm not allowed to talk about it because of, oh, of course. because of the governments. And you, but... you have a girlfriend in Canada too. I'm no. sure. <laughs> no, I have, but I, I can tell you offline. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. I know what we're talking okay. about. You're good. Uh, you're good. All right. Uh, he's been the VP of the Planetary Society, which advocates space science research and exploration. Okay. So we know he's big into space, all yep. this Mars stuff yep. and everything else. So that's pretty cool. And this is the second tie-in for uh, dancing. He has a number of patents, one of which is for ballet point shoes. So you know like those shoes for when they're dancing on their toes? Yeah, yeah. I don't know how he has this. But he, he's made this patent. I don't know. Maybe he's a big dance advocate as well. I or don't know. Yeah, he might have, might have some kids or something like maybe. that that, that has. I, I didn't know. I didn't see in all my research. About is, his he a, family. is he a family I don't guy? Know. Or is he, keep, he must keep it pretty. I didn't see that as well, which is, which is nice. Uh, he also has, and I don't know how this is a patent, he has one for an educational magnifying glass that's created <laughs> by filling a clear plastic bag with water. How do you patent that? You patent a bag with water? I don't understand. So that's how you make your hey, thing. Good on him, right? Yeah. And he has a number of books. I didn't write the name. So he wrote, uh, he wrote two books. One was um, Undeniable Evolution in Science of Creation and wow. also Unstoppable Harnessing Science to Change the World. Um, those are the two books here. I would have thought go. he was... My guess is he's probably done a lot of like articles, but these probably. are the two ri written like books that he's done, because um, he's all over the place. Like, he I, I mean, oh, he's, he's a busy he's, man. He's been interviewed a ton, um, and I, I, the more and more I looked into it, I, I, I enjoy him. I think he's like the Ryan Seacrest of science. Of the science. He's <laughs> everywhere. He's <laughs> hard working, <laughs> good looking dude. That's that's what I'm going. I'd see, I, I would say Neil deGrasse is probably more. Yeah, of that. he's very personable. It seems they they're buddies. They're on some commercial all the time now together, together? right? I think so. Uh, I didn't look it up, but I think okay. so. Uh, and then last but not least, he has a bunch of other degrees, sort of. Oh, these are all the Rutgers. Right? Rutgers gave him an honorary Doctor of Science degree. Lehigh, an honorary Doctor of uh, Pedagogy, which is teaching of theoretical topics. And Simon Fraser University gave him a Doctor of Science. 
So look okay. at him, all these doctorates. How do you, I, okay, I have a question about those, and maybe our listeners know, or maybe you know, because you're a pretty smart guy. I, I am. When you get these honorary degrees, they mean nothing. Correct. Like, it's just a piece of paper. Yep. Like, it's not like I can get an honorary degree from a school for science, and I can say I'm an expert in this field. I think you basically show up and uh, give, like, the commencement speech or something, and they're like, and we're honoring you with this degree that means nothing. Okay. Which they'll probably do with us soon. I feel like you and I are I, well I, I, on our way. Yeah. Because we're, I, I do, I really feel like you and I are in very similar areas as Bill Nye the science guy. He's science and technology and space and does all this cool stuff. He has a fun personality and I, yeah. I feel like you and I, I mean me way more than you from mostly a fun just and you. personable way. Right. Because yeah. you're mostly just kind of sour and nasty. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so, 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 so mostly me. Yeah, you and you basically are Bill Nye. I love our listeners are going to listen to the end and hear this uh -huh. this gem. Um, yeah, so that was really nice of you. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Bill Nye's probably going to find this on his own I hope and he does. reach out to us to be on the show. I, I I would love it. That would even if he just came on for a couple minutes because cats even if like he just him, tweeted me. Yeah, because cats like him. I'm sure they have a speaking fee and an appearance fee. Oh, yeah. And it's like this buku bucks. That's probably so. true. Well, we support the sciences and yeah. the spaces. He should do it for free because he's a good guy. Yeah. What the heck else is he doing? Apparently a lot. Yeah. All right. So that's all I have on Bill Nye. Uh, I think I will say that he is, in fact, a science guy. He is a science guy. And, and he technically is an inventor, too. So I, I feel like at the beginning of the, our broadcast, I was like, eh, I'm going to say, yeah. He's yeah. um, he's definitely a science guy. He's definitely an inventor, and uh, I'm I, I like what he does for science and technology. I agree. I think I think he's a good dude. Yeah. So with that, uh, hopefully everybody enjoyed this. Hopefully everybody's learned a lot about our good friend Bill Nye, close personal friend. Yeah, and don't forget if you have people you think we should research because we always struggle with this oh, one. Yeah. Send in some names of uh, inventors uh, that you want us to look into. Yeah. We'd be happy to. Google them. <laughs> <laughs> that was used to be our description. We yeah. basically just do the Googling for you. Yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah. Awesome. Until yeah. next time. See you guys.